So I'm going to start first by talking about scissors congruence, then the K theory will just sort of slowly appear. So what is scissors congruence? Well, there's this thing that we do as mathematicians quite a lot where we have a big problem, we break it up into smaller pieces, we solve the problem for each of the smaller pieces, and then we sort of re try to reassemble the answer. And scissors congruence just sort of asks about that procedure. When can you break something down into smaller pieces and reassemble them? How many ways can you reassemble them? How many ways can you reassemble the same pieces into the same object? That kind of question. So the most classical example of this is with polygons. So when are two polygons scissors congruent? Well, they obviously have to have the same area. And in fact, it turns out that that's the only scissors congruence invariant. So for instance, this is a rearrangement of the triangle into the rectangle. Um, and that result is due to Euclid, so it's quite old. Um, and then the next question is, OK, well, what about polyhedra? Uh, when are, would two polyhedra with the same volume, when can you cut one up, rearrange it into the other one? And it turns out the volume is not the only invariant. Um, there's a second invariant called the Dane invariant. It was uh, constructed by Dane in 1901, which goes from the set of polyhedra up to scissors congruence to R tensored with R mod Z, where the tensor product is over Z. It's not a fun group. Um, and this turns out to be the only uh, invariant. And this is actually this is due to Seidler in 1965. So there's quite a long break in between that this is the only other invariant, so volume in the Dane invariant. And now we can say, OK, well, what about four dimensions? And what about other geometries like hyperbolic space and spherical space and other things like that? And the problem becomes very, very hard very, very quickly. We can stretch this result to four dimensions, but then we're pretty much done. Um, as in, we can't move any, much, any further. Not we know what's going on. And so as often as the case, we'll try to make a more algebraic setting for what we're doing. So we're going to define the following group. It's going to be P of x. And when I say x, I mean Euclidean space, spherical space, or hyperbolic space. And this is the free abelian group generated by polytopes P in x. Modulo two relations. First off, if uh, P equals Q, if P is congruent to Q. And secondly, P union Q equals P plus Q if P intersect Q has measure 0. So that last part is just so that we don't need to worry about the lengths of these segments on the intersections here. So now the question becomes, well, what can we say about this group? And uh, there's several very interesting results about this group. And in particular, I want to mention Two of them, one is a result of DuPont and Sa from 1982, which says there's the following uh, medium length exact sequence, um, which relates the scissors congruence of hyperbolic space to the, K th the algebraic K theory of the complex numbers. And for any algebraic topologist and for a lot of other people, this is a highly suggestive uh, medium length sequence because it has a K3 and a K2. And you really wish that you could extend it infinitely in both directions. Um, this is not to say that I know how to do this. This is one of my motivations for starting to look at this. But I still don't know how to do it. Another result uh, due to Goncharov in 99. Um, is that, so this is the Dane invariant, and you can generalize it to higher dimensions of Euclidean spherical and hyperbolic space. And the kernel of the Dane invariant, um, if we restrict to the polyhedra with, uh, um, with coefficients in Q bar, um, tensored with Q, so this is some group. Um, and volume is still a well-defined uh, homomorphism out of this into, well, not exactly the real numbers, but pretty much the real numbers. And this factors through the Borel regulator.
I'm not going to go into details of what all these things mean, just the thing I want to draw your attention to is that the K theory is appearing again. So we might say, okay, well, maybe there's something fundamentally K theoretic about this problem. It might be an accident that it appears when we look at this problem. Um, but if we look at the definition a little bit more, we notice that it become that it actually looks quite k-theoretic. So for our commutative ring, the k k zero of R is defined to be the um, I'm gonna write a fagger for free abelian group because otherwise I'll be writing it out a lot and I don't want to write fag. Um, so. So this is generated by uh, finitely generated projective modules over R, um, modulo the following. So I'm going to write this a little bit redundantly. Uh, M equals N if M is isomorphic to N, and um, M equals M prime plus M double prime if there's a short exact sequence of R modules that looks like this. So you can see that these two definitions look very, very similar. And the thing about uh, K theory is usually it's introduced as a sequence of groups Kn, one for each n, or if you're a topologist, as a space where these are the homotopy groups, which keep a lot of information about R in it. Not all information, I don't think, but, um, uh, but a lot of information about R. And they have a lot of, there's a lot of interesting invariants that live in these groups. And um, so w one might say, well, can you make a space that has that as K0? And there's, in fact, this is not the only context in which you see groups like this. There's two other ones I specifically want to mention. There's K0 varieties, I mean, I'm going to say over C, but you can do it over anything, where you have the free abelian group on varieties over C, modulo the two relations, well, X equals Y if X is congruent to Y, well, isomorphic, I'm sorry, and um, X equals the complement of Y and X plus Y for y a closed subvariety of x. And this is the growth and ring of varieties, the ring structures induced by Cartesian product. And there have been a lot of people who've studied this. And then there's one more um, that I want to mention. So if you have a theory t, you can look at k0 of t by looking at the uh, free abelian group generated on definable sets over t. And uh, then you have a similar relation where I'm not going to write the first one, but you have S union T is S plus T if S intersect T is as the set. And once again, you can see these look, all three of these definitions look very similar. So one of the things we'd like to do is we'd like to construct a space that has this as pi zero, and we'd like to do it in a way that you know isn't just trivial by say taking the Eilenberg McLean uh, space because that would just be silly. Um, and one thing I want to say, I'm going to be saying spectrum. If you don't know what a spectrum is, just think space where all homotopy groups, including pi zero, are abelian. But everything I'm going to be saying from now on is actually going to be about spectra rather than spaces. Okay, so we would like to encode this in from geometric information in a more algebraic manner. So we're going to do this uh, in the following manner. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to simultaneously give a definition and an example of the definition so that you can see where the, the bits of the definition are coming from. So an assembler is a category C. So in this case, in the case I'm interested in, uh, which is going to be the polytope example. The objects are polytopes, so non-degenerate polytopes in X and the empty set. And the morphisms are inclusions. 
So it's an isometry that takes one polytope into another one. And this category has to satisfy three, uh, three axioms. The first one is that all morphisms are monomorphisms. And this just means that they're injections. So here, the, we said that they were inclusions. Um, secondly, you need C has to have pullbacks and an initial object, by which I just mean that you can intersect subsets of something. If you have two polyhedra sitting inside another one, you can take their intersection. That's, that's what this means. And lastly, C is a growth and site. And what this means is that we have the data about which objects contain, which smaller objects contain all of the information of a larger object. So in this example, the the topology, this is, to be a site, you need to come with a growth and decay topology. Uh, I'm going to say that you have a family of maps is a covering family if the union of the piece of eyes is P. So that's what's going on. And you can, you can see that in these three examples, you have one of these automatically. And in this example, the actual algebraic K theory that we were sort of motivated by partially, it, this is not an example. And the reason for this is naturally we'd want a covering family to be if the submodules generate your larger module. That's the covering. But you know, just as a silly example of a, of a module over a field, here's a two-dimensional vector space. Here's a covering by one line and a second line. And if you restrict to a submodule, it needs to still be a cover. But if we restrict to this diagonal line, well, the one that goes through the origin anyway, it's no longer a cover. So we can't do it. So somehow these three examples are of a completely different kind from this algebraic example. But they're still unified in their own structure. So the theorem is that there exists a functor, k, from the category of assemblers to the category of spectra, such that pi 0 is uh, the free abelian group generated by objects of C modulo the a relation. I'm not going to write out the whole thing. But pretty much, if you have a finite covering family, where the pieces are suitably disjoint, then P equals the sum of the piece of I. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of this construction. The point is that it exists. And in the last couple of minutes, I want to say a little bit about its various properties. So these groups come with a lot of structure on them. There's been a lot of investigation of the various structures on them. There, for instance, I mentioned that the growth and degrading of varieties is a ring. And one of the things we might want to do is we might want to be able to duplicate these structures on the spaces we get, spectra we get, so that we can say that the, uh, that the algebraic structure here was a shadow of the topological structure. Um, and you can do this with a lot of things. You can construct, for instance, ring structures quite easily. Um, but one of the questions, OK, well, what information about the geometry does this space have? Um, and one result, which, well, it's very difficult in general to compute anything about K theory at all. And K1 is known for some things, but in general, it's also quite mysterious. But we can say something about the K theory of the ones of the, here, I'm going to assume that. So C is, well, so. One of the statements I'm going to say is about general, and then it's going to be about segments in E1. So first off, the general statement is that this is generated by rearrangement. So you have x, an object x, and you have a bunch of pieces of x, and you have two different rearrangements of, of the pieces into x. So th this is breaking down x into pieces, and this is reassembling it. And these are the generators of pi 1. 
Um, and uh, there's a bunch of relations on these, obviously, which makes it difficult to identify exactly what the group is. Um, but for segments in E1, um, I have a conjecture that this is R skew symmetric product over Z with itself. Um, and we have the following statement. So first off, pi 1 of K, I'll just write E1, no. Pi 1 of K, I'll just write E1 for this, surjects onto this. And there's a section, S. Um, and in addition, you have the following interesting facts. So pi 1 of k of E1, if so if you restrict to segments with endpoints in Z, it's actually very easy to identify this turns out to be the sphere spectrum. And so then we just know that this is Z mod 2, which is exactly Z skew-symmetric tensor product over itself. And if we restrict to Q, then this is the trivial group, which is isomorphic to Q, skew symmetric tensor product over Z with itself. So my con I conjecture that this is an isomorphism, but so far all I've been able to show is that there's a subjection in the section. Um, and yeah, and for future work, I would really like to be able to identify various structures on these groups as coming from the spaces. For instance, the Dane invariant, it would be very nice if you construct it as a, map, as a map of spectra, but this is, turns out to be very difficult. Um, over here, there's motivic integration that I would really like to see if, if it can be constructed or if there's an obstruction to it being constructed. And yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you very much.